Hello, everyone. Thank you for tuning in once again. This is the Blur Dad Podcast, and I got some rest, and so I think the audio sounds correct on entry. That doesn't happen very often. Uh, it happens when I'm well rested. I did get some rest because I had a sleep study. I don't know if you know what a sleep study is. It's when you go in and they monitor your sleep. It's very, it's a very creepy situation. There's basically a guy sitting there in a hazmat suit and he's looking over you as you sleep. And then, you know, he wakes you up in the morning quite abruptly, might I say, and says, okay, everything's fine. And uh, we'll, we'll give you a CPAP in a little bit, but that's my life, man. That's, that's what I deal with. Uh, I just jumped right into it. I want to welcome you to the Blurred Dad podcast, a space where we have unfiltered conversations and nerd out about fatherhood. I am your host, Glenn Lawrence. And uh, yeah, like I said, I'm well rested today. I'm feeling great. I'm feeling stupendous. I'm feeling amazing. Um, I can't I can't complain. Uh, I felt guilty actually, because I got to go somewhere else and sleep while Steph had to take care of, uh, the baby all night, which, you know, it was for medical reasons. You know what I mean? Um, I almost wanted to unplug some of the apparatus so I could be like, oh, the test messed up and I have to go back and sleep again. But I didn't do that. Uh, I'm taking care of my responsibility and I'll just take the one night of sleep, um, and then come back to it. Um. Hey, uh, a lot's going on in the world right now. Uh, I, New Orleans is getting battered by Hurricane Ida, so our hearts go out to uh, out to them, praying for them, and and hopefully, um, you know, there there won't be too much destruction or, or loss of anything really. But if you know if there is, we'll we'll try to do our best to to make something um, you know happen for the folks. So our our heart heart goes out. Uh, in that situation. Also for the situation in Afghanistan, praying for those families out there to, to come back safe and everything to work out. Uh, and uh, a final prayer for, for Kanye. He dropped Donda and it was, whew, it was something. Now in his, you know, listen, they he said Universal released the album a little bit earlier than it was supposed to be released. And I could hear that. I could hear that in some of the songs. It sounded sound like some of those songs were rough drafts. Uh, I don't know if they were you know, um, you know, the full, the full nine. Um, but yeah, it's, um, yeah, it's, uh, it's, a uh, it's a tough thing. It's a tough thing that, you know, when you, when you put your art out there and then people maybe don't like respect it the way that you respect it, but you know, you, you've been having concerts about, you know, your, your process. I don't know. It's, it's kind of odd. So, I mean, that dropped out there. I was listening to it. Uh, the instrumentals are, are great as they always were. Um, you know, Songs could use some work, but I think that's why it wasn't finished. So that's what's kind of going on in the world today. A lot of reason for prayer, a lot of reason for prayer, um, you know, in, in today's uh, day and age. But, uh, you know, we, we don't got a prayer here. I mean, we do pray here. Um, I don't know what, what what I was about to say. Uh <laughs> Maybe I didn't get enough sleep. You know what I mean? Uh, maybe, I, maybe I maybe I thought I had enough sleep, but I didn't quite get enough sleep. All right. Uh, let's move on to our sponsors tonight. Uh, they are, uh, they made me wear it. They made me wear it. They're, they're dog stylists for the everyday part. They get your dog laced up. Uh, it's a husband and wife team, and they are on a mission, a hardcore mission uh, to, to make sure that your dog or your cat, or whatever type of animal you got. If you got a dragon, she, they could have helped out. Daenerys Targaryen lace those dragons up with you know harnesses or whatever. Whatever you got, they got fashions for them. Whether they got to go to um, you know a, a Halloween uh, out, a Halloween party or a, um, a pajama jammy jam. Whatever you got, they got something for your fur baby or your your scale baby. Um, also, when you shop at their store, you're contributing to Hope for Paws. It's an animal rescue organization that works tirelessly to rescue the lives of uh, abandoned animals. So what are you waiting for? Um, uh, you know, go to theymamewear.com and check out with code word blurred for 15% off the entire store. Woo. So, you know, that's a... Um, that's a that's 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 great. They've they've been here for a while and they they just keep doing it up for us and we can't thank them uh enough. Now, I know that during this podcast uh you know, I've talked about the the birth for a while. Uh I, I talked to I talked about um birthing 
uh, ad nauseum. And I'm sure that some of you are probably like, ah, we're tired of hearing of that subject. We want to hear more blurdy things during these broadcasts. Glenn, where are the blurred topics? Where are they at? Um, so I thought maybe I would split the difference and I would bring on a guest tonight who could do a little bit of both. Uh, talk about the, the birthing topic and also talk about some nerdy things. Uh, yeah, so so that is what we're going to do. Um, the guest tonight is uh, Mel Kennedy. Uh, uh, they are uh, a reproductive justice advocate, a student midwife and a doula. Also, uh, the owner of The Garden in Gainesville, Virginia, which is a very nice part of, of Virginia. I've been out there. It's a, it's a growing, bustling area uh, and home to uh, The Garden. Uh, they also run a 3D printing business, which is called Uncle Goggles Emporium uh, with, with their partner. Uh, Mel also has a, a couple of children that are like uh, 13 and 17, an amazing mom. Um, she does all things and she's a, uh, or, uh, they're, a, a great, um, you know, um, midwife and, and doula. So that's, uh, pretty exciting. So, um, we're going to have them, uh, come on and talk to us a little bit right about now. Mel, what is going on? How are you doing? Hey, good to be here. Yeah. So glad I, I made it back in time. I was in DC, you know, oh, really? doing bird things. So. Oh, cool. Did you have a birth tonight? Uh, false alarm. <laughs> okay. Oh, wow. See, that's a, uh, that's wild. It's just like at any moment you could be called away and, and gone. So was this one like, uh, they were, they were like fully dilated or it was just like. Uh, third time mom. So, you know, I felt a little twinge and, you know, you know how yeah, right. birth can go at any minute and, you know, middle of DC rush hour traffic. It's like, we should just go just in case. So. Yeah. Right. It's like hard to, hard to, um, <laughs> it's hard yeah. to gauge. That was one of the things about our birth. Like it was, you know, it, it came a moment where it's like, okay, it's go time, you know, water's broken. Um, and we think the baby is about to come. Obviously we've never done it before. So we don't know if that means the baby is fully coming or if like, you know, it's going to be a false alarm because uh, the week before we had thought that we were in labor, but then it turned out we weren't. So mm -hmm. um being first time parents, you don't, you don't know. So it's like, when do you call in the reinforcements as I'd like to call you all? <laughs> yes. <laughs> so um, thank you so much for, for coming on here and just uh, talking to us a little bit um, about things. One of the, the issues or one of the things that I have been uh, ever since I started this podcast, I've been really um, mindful and, and really um, wanting to do is just highlight the different avenues that you have for your birth. And one of those is, you know, um, enlisting the services of a midwife or even, um, you know, getting a doula to, to be involved and help you with your uh, pregnancy. So I'm, I'm really trying to put a spotlight on that because I don't know that I don't, before it happened, I don't think I ever heard of uh, many people talking about it. It's like some that you hear in passing, but it's not like one of those mainstream things that everyone's talking about. Oh yeah. You know, this is, this is how we do it. So uh, it's one of the things I've really been, been focused on. And you're like uh, a, a advocate in that area, mm -hmm. correct? Correct. Um, really got into it when I uh, gave birth to my oldest child. He's 13 now when we lived in um, England. So, Ooh. Yeah, so I got to experience the whole NHS system, you know, call the midwife, the whole the whole culture of birth uh, and family there. Wait, is it way different overseas when you when you have a kid? Um, yes, it, it's like I said, it's a different culture of a birth, you know. It's if things are uncomplicated, you have the option to give birth in like a maternity home like not a maternity home, that's not what they call them anymore. You know, on a ward just specifically for labor and delivery or at home. Mm. So you so. have like basically two, like those two options where I feel like in the U S most of what you do is, uh, you deliver in the emergency room, <laughs> right? It feels like that, right? <laughs> you rush in there and what's happening. And next thing you know, if you're lucky, they'll get you up to a room. If not, yeah, you're down there with, you know, 
people that have been playing with fireworks and delivering your baby. Yeah, right. So like right next to you, there's like a guy with like one arm or whatever, and then you're giving birth. And then the next person has to get stitches or whatever. It's kind of a you know, it could be a traumatizing experience, you know? Yeah. <laughs> like That's the baby pops out and he's like, What did I what did I get myself into? You're like, you know what? Never mind. I didn't sign up for this. <laughs> oh, so uh so being overseas, it kind of opened your eyes to like the different um pathways to giving birth? Exactly. Um, different choices, options, you know, you just kind of get conditioned a certain way. And then next thing you know, it's like going to a restaurant. It's like going to the Cheesecake Factory for the first time and they throw down that, you know, phone book of, of food choices. And you're right. like, wait a minute, <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> like these are all the things that I can, can do? That I can do. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, it was definitely, um, it was a great experience. And then something when I can then came back to the States um, and started really getting into um, explaining to people, you know, what their choices were and about physiological birth. It was like, no, you can do these things. And mm -hmm. yeah. And then, yeah, that's the thing, you know, being a military brat, I went to um, high school in Okinawa too. So then kind of seeing, you know, some of the Japanese side of the medical things and having um, Japanese friends that their mothers were pregnant and all that. So it's just, you know, exposing people to, to options, <laughs> choices. I was a military brat, too. I moved mm -hmm. around a bunch. Yeah. I, didn't see, I didn't see as many births, though, in my, in my <laughs> day. I was, <laughs> I, I was exploring the playgrounds of these different military bases. I was not mm. exploring the hospitals. Um, but uh, it is interesting when you move around, you do get uh, access to and you witness and and interact with a lot of different cultures. What was like the uh, Japanese experience like in terms of giving birth? Did you see home births there too, or just heard mm -hmm. about them? Exactly. So, you know, being in high school, you know, you're not really like into that kind of stuff or seeing those kinds of things, but then it was like a nurse coming to the home, you know, and checking and then, oh, your mom gave birth, you know, congratulations. And they're like, yeah, you know, she's going to be there for a week and talking about like food choices and then just how the family gathers around afterwards. And it's devoid of that, you know, in the, in the United States, you you go to the doctor, you have your baby, you're in the hospital and then you, and then, you know, then they throw you out on the curb and say, good luck. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I've, I've been, I've been strongly, um, not advocating, but just strongly voicing the fact that, you know, the hospital has its place in, mm -hmm. in the birthing process. Right. Yes. Um, but there are other options out there. Cause I don't want people to get angry. Like, like you told me not to go to the hospital. And, <laughs> but I, you know, I just think it's like, what I usually like to say is there is a degree of exploring your options and planning out what you want to do. Like, how do you want the birth to go? Which I think is, is really uh, important. Um, and, you know, even though my partner is not a um, uh, uh, black female, I feel like that being able to plan those things out for black females is much more helpful because, you know, the, the mortality rates for, for black females giving pregnancy are, are much higher and the instances of something, you know, bad happening um, is much higher. And I feel like once you, when you can plan things out or whatever, you can maybe avoid some of those systematic things that end up happening when you um, go. So another reason why I wanted to talk to you is because you're such an advocate, like, mm -hmm. uh, like um, how often do you uh, have to do that kind of advocate, especially for black mothers? Yeah. So it feels like every time I get called, you know, to do birth work and I'm specifically filling the role of a birth doula, especially in Washington, DC, if I really can't advocate for them to go to a maybe a more friendlier hospital, a hospital that would really listen to them, you know, as a whole person and not just, oh, there's another pregnant person here. Um, yeah, it feels like I have to make sure I know ahead of time, like what the patient advocate number is, you know, who's the who's the charge nurse of the night, like writing down these people's names and then making mm -hmm. sure that if things don't go right, or maybe somebody's told wrong information, or they just come up and start trying to do procedures without asking permission to touch somebody's body first. It mm. it turns into, okay, we're going to stop here. Can I please have the patient advocate, you know, come to the room? Or I don't, or teaching people how to pol politely decline, like, wow, thank you for explaining that to me. That was really interesting, but we declined that option at this time. Yeah. So. One thing that I always have thought is wild in terms of hospitals uh, mm -hmm. is like you go in, 
and then you get like a service or whatever. They there's no like if you go to Best Buy, you're gonna buy a TV or something. You get mm -hmm. to understand like what you're paying for, and you get to decline. You know, Geek Squad. Like you can't decline the Geek Squad at the hospital. You know what I mean? They just they just do whatever they're gonna do, and then you get a bill later. And you know, it's just it's just wild. The other thing is like if I if me and you go into the hospital and mm -hmm. we both have broken legs or whatever even yeah. to the point where i think if we both have the same insurance like we get different bills and i think that that is so crazy to me as well mm -hmm. like how you know how that whole system works like all of a sudden mm -hmm. you know you you have uh this crazy bill that you weren't consulted on you know you were you were in there you were fine and then they're like oh let me give you this you take it because you're like, oh, the doctor's giving it to me. I guess it's fine. But then you get a bill later. And then the other thing, because now I'm going on a tangent. <laughs> it's like <laughs> it's like the it's like the nurses or whatever, like or the or the doctors. When you ask them how much does this cost, they never know. And mm -hmm. they say, oh, I don't know how much it costs. It's like that's a different department. And the person who knows the cost of all the things that you do usually is not in the hospital. Like I'd say, I'd say like 95 to 99% of the time, the person who actually tells you like what this is all going to cost you is not there. So it's nice to have someone who can advocate for you be like, no, no, like that's a, that's an expensive procedure or that's not a procedure that we need. You know what I'm saying? And like can help you navigate that. Exactly. It's just reminding people of their choices, you know, necessarily it wouldn't like um, intervene due to cost, but it would be like, oh, that's interesting. Well, why, you know, do we want to do this? What happens if we don't do this? What if, you know, we wait 30 minutes before we do this? It's just reminding people that there is time when it comes to certain, you know, choices and interventions, you know, barring, you know, baby heart deceleration, medical emergency, you know, all those right. kinds of things. Yeah, it was um, because I, I do remember when we had our birth, it was like a, it's a, intense experience right and then you're mm -hmm. very like nervous so you don't you don't like it's hard to make sound decisions when you're kind of in alert mode you know you're, yes. you you kind of go into that fight or flight uh, mm -hmm. mentality uh so to speak um and it's nice to have someone who has been through it before who's like no 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 this is not a this is not one of those situations and they can bring down the anxiety a little bit and then uh talk to somebody talk to the the other professional so you're speaking the same language so yeah. Well, I think we've we've said we've got the definition before. What's the definition between a doula and a midwife? Okay, so specifically, a doula is someone there that can support you physically, mentally, emotionally. You know, hold your hand, help you advocate, and then the midwife side is can be all those things, but you know, with medical training and degrees, and mm. you know. A midwife, you know, a doulas can't perform, you know, cervical checks, do, you know, you know, any of those kind of diagnostic, you know, hands-on types of things, but they can definitely be there for you to help you, you know, emotionally prepare, mentally prepare, help teach you comfort measures. Okay. So the doula yeah. is like your pregnancy sidekick, basically. Exactly. Like there to hold hold it down for you kind of and, and mm -hmm. make sure make sure that you're feeling comfortable and then kind of talk to people and, and make sure that they're um uh making you feel comfortable as well exactly help right. you debrief too if things don't go the way you know that we have planned then that's fine you know you're not going to just be like well good luck it's like nope going to come to your house after this baby's born we're going to talk about your birth i'm going to make sure you know you guys you know are you know smooth sailing just don't want to <laughs> abandon ship and be like Good luck. That, see, this is the thing. Like when we, because I when we had our uh, meetings and we talked about, um, you know, the birth before because everything was, you know, was a plan and we were leading up to it or whatever. Like mm -hmm. that was the thing that I was most afraid of. I don't know if you remember. And I was just like, wait. So after the baby's born, how long are y'all going to stay around? Because yes. <laughs> I don't want to just I don't, like I, like I can't just have we can't just have the baby and then be left alone with it. We need we need we need training wheels for at least a week. <laughs> exactly. And that's the thing is I wasn't there, you know, at the birth of Morgan because I was doing overnight postpartum work for a family that has um, special needs twins. Oh, wow. So I was doing the one of the 24-7, um, you know, I was in the overnight portion of it. And then Ryan was just like, no, that family, you know, needs you. And the, one of the littlest ones was having a lot of... Uh, esophagus issues you know when it came to eating so 
I'm well, Miss Morgan I'm, coming I'm, into this world. <laughs> I'm so thankful that you were there for them. Um, mm -hmm. Sad, you know, selfishly for ourselves because we all had such a great time planning this birth that we, it, you know, it was sad that you weren't able to to actually be there because I made soup. I made soup for everyone. I was excited, you know, had, for that. We talked about tacos. Oh, I know. <laughs> yeah, we, we talked about tacos. It was, it was supposed to be a great <laughs> experience. And the whole time, like, I don't know if I told you about like the whole time I'm asking, I'm like, all right, well, can I, can I make the soup? Can I do the tub? And Ryan just kept saying, there's not going to be time. There's no time. Um, so it, it really happened quite, uh, quite rapidly, but, um, yeah, but Hey, now I get to come over and do postpartum work with you and, you know, help you out with the lactation. <laughs> exactly. Now so you, you have to forgive me if I'm on the couch, just snoring away while, while this happens. <laughs> Uh, and, and that's okay. I'll just make sure Stephanie doesn't put a pillow over your face. Exactly. That's all. <laughs> it's probably been a couple of times. I feel so bad because, you know, like the mom, just so you know, if you're out there and you're about to have a baby, the mom is up like, like pretty much up 24, like seven. That's, you know, there's, there's no way around it. And even if you want to, as a dad, it's very difficult to, um, you know, to, to interject in there, especially if she's doing like the breastfeeding or whatever. Now, maybe if we were doing a formula or something, it might be a little bit easier, but if they're doing breastfeeding, the mom is up. Like she, like she just has to be up. Like there's no way around it. She like either has to pump or feed. And, um, but with that, I was like, all right, well, why don't I just take a nap? Because, uh, there's no reason that both of us have to be like exhausted and, you know, like, uh, like annoyed. So I took, you know, I took my chances. <laughs> and that's good. You know, shifts, you know, are what works best in those first six weeks. Yeah. So what's your favorite part of, of being a midwife How, What's uh, or, or, or a doula or working your way towards midwifery? Midwifery. I think my favorite part is just empowering people with choice. You know, they can come to me and like I said, I do full spectrum. So people can come to me if they decide that they don't want to continue on their particular path and I will support them through that. People coming through and they're having issues trying to conceive, helping them, you know, through those choices, like you said, birth and labor, like helping you and Stephanie plan, you know, what you guys wanted, how you envisioned it. And then postpartum works. I think I just really enjoy working with people and at the end of it, just seeing like satisfaction on their face, the happiness right. that they made this. And I was just able, you know, to hold their hand as they made their way down that road and like be a part of it. Yes. Yeah. I, I tell you, it's invaluable to have somebody there with you, especially, especially to uh, feel uh, familial with, you know, mm -hmm. like you feel very close with, um, you know, in, in terms of, a normal birth, it could feel very cold if it's just one person who just comes in, you know, and, and is there for their job and then they go away, you know? Um, exactly. And obviously you're in kind of, again, that heightened sense of awareness. So mm -hmm. you, you're not aware of it, but there really is a difference when you do have people who are like kind of caring and loving towards you, um, helping you uh, deliver the, yes. the baby. Exactly. <laughs> so, yeah, that's, you know, um, that's super dope. Um, yeah, man, I, I don't know. I can't, I can't say enough how, uh, much I appreciated your all's, uh, service. Um, what was, can I ask, what was your favorite part of our birth? Um, even though you weren't there, just our process, what was your, what was your favorite part of, of just meeting with us and hanging out with us? So I definitely enjoy when you go on your tangents in the office and then the look Stephanie gives you like, wait, is she giving me a look? <laughs> Be kind of like, Rain it. Wait, is she giving me because I'm not paying attention. I'm in my head. Is there a look? Like, like I think if she could, there would be, you know, the music they play at the Oscars when you just your speech goes on too long. Just like <laughs> see? Wait, stop it. A look. Said, yeah. We're gonna have we're gonna have discussions about this. I didn't know there was a look that she what is the damn look we're talking about? Like, man, if we were at, you know, Showtime at the Apollo, the guy come out with the little cane, the broom. Okay, Glenn, get off the stage. Look, this is how in this is how intense I am. This is how into it I am. Because you know, Dollar Fathers are involved in this process. I was very involved. Like, I got questions. I need answers. No, nope, <laughs> that's very true. You were your own special. We've had, you know, the motivators like get some, you know, fathers there. We've had the ones that I've worked with some like Orthodox Jewish families. So the fathers are just over there in another room doing prayer. Yeah. So no, you were like that perfect balance of like, 
can I make soup? Can I get you anything? Can I fill up the pool? Hey, let yeah. me tell you my latest jokes. <laughs> yeah. I, look, yeah. I haven't been on stage in, in months. You know what I mean? So I need an audience. It's funny because <laughs> Stephanie, I constantly tell, I was like, I need to get on stage because I feel like I am torturing you with all this energy from not being out performing. <laughs> no, you definitely captured us, you know, at four weeks apart, two weeks apart, once a week. You know, every three days, you know, as soon as you close that office door, you were you were on stage. <laughs> <laughs> well, but I mean, the thing is, it's, I, I don't know. I just uh, a lot of my stage presence is kind of my uh, presence. And it's just kind of the way I am. I am uh, extremely present in just about all situations. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. so and that's what happens. It's like when I'm there, I'm just like very present. I feel like it's sometimes off putting to people mm. because a lot of times people aren't as present. And I'm just like. You know, like I'm very serious. Like it, it I, I don't know. It might seem funny, but I'm very like serious about like the questions, and they're very like in depth and direct. Which I feel like sometimes people, you know, they're kind of beat around the bush, and I'm just like, no, no, no. I want to know this thing here. Like sometimes I think, all right, I might have a mild sense of like autism. I may be on the spectrum, like on, like at a low level, because I'm I like get very like focused, and I don't like really uh, take social cues very well. So. No, you're perfectly fine. Like we said, we have the ADHD gang, you know, that we have, especially with Ryan's, you know. Me and Ryan <laughs> match up perfectly. Yeah. <laughs> and I can see when it happens. I'm like, oh, I got to reel it back. And then I think she like sees the same thing with mm. But You know what? I should come in and join the team. I feel like we'd make a great team. Uh, sure, it was, yeah. I tell you, the birth was very fun. It was a, it was a great time. It was it, it, like she was just sitting in the corner. She was like, "I like when you when you come to visit us again, I'll I'll mm -hmm. I'll relay out <laughs> the scenario." I'll be like, Ryan was sitting here because she's such a tiny person. She was just fit. I didn't even know a person could fit in that corner. She just fit in the little corner, <laughs> sat there. <laughs> she had a whole laptop and whole command center. I was like, "How did you fit all that in there with yourself?" <laughs> Oh my goodness. <laughs> um, so, uh, all right. One thing I did want to get back to, because I do want to talk about this, is, um, mm -hmm. you know, like, uh, like uh, the problems and the issues that, that African American and, and Black uh, and, and people of color have when they're going for pregnancy and, and, mm -hmm. and how it just seems like they have more issues. Um, you know, than their white counterparts. Like, have you uh, witnessed that? Have you advocated for that? Does that play into your advocacy? Yes, definitely. You know, it comes from everything. It doesn't matter what class you are, you know, what insurance, you know, we saw that with Serena Williams, you know, as soon as you get in there and you're in that hospital gown, they treat us all the same. So oh. yeah, it's, it's definitely being a student midwife, knowing, you know, at the certain interval in times, these certain checks should be happening. You know, um, this is kind of the standard operating procedure. So when I start noticing that the nurse isn't coming in, you know, at the hourly, every two hour for these checks, if they haven't offered this, if they're doing that, is to then remind the staff, you know, hey, it's time for a temporal check, or you haven't done the blood pressures in the last hour, you know, making sure that these people are getting the same equal level of care that everybody would get because sometimes you know it could just be an unconscious bias you know when it comes to many healthcare professionals they may be blind to how they may treat people and not know why mm -hmm. yeah that's the thing that i feel like happens quite often it's sometimes things aren't nefarious but it's just like neglect you know of uh, neglect of certain things for whatever reasons, just mm -hmm. for some reason, it didn't click for you, at, like, at that time for this person. And it tends that oftentimes when you're a person of color, mm -hmm. that, that uh, rare occurrence ten tends to happen with us. You yeah, know, like, like, way way often. I don't know where that is. I Sometimes I equate it to the fact of like, you know, when you um, like, if I have my own, uh, like, uh, slice of pizza and I'm carrying it. I'm very careful not to drop my slice of pizza. But if I have like someone else's and I'm like carrying them, it's like, oh, it like it's just like an accident. That's a terrible analogy. But you know what I'm saying? Like if it's yours, like you, you like care about it a lot yes. more. And then we like it's not that you wanted to like mess it up. It's just that you you just didn't focus on it as much because it's like 
you know, not your your thing or whatever. So yeah. having someone bring you that ni- mindfulness, bring you back to that mindfulness, I think mm-hmm. is um, super yeah. important. I would say uh, another white person seeing another white person, they probably have a more familial bond. You know, they could see them and see them as a daughter, an aunt, you know, a cousin or something like that. But then seeing a black or brown body is foreign mm-hmm. to them. You know, like they don't got black friends, you know, they don't have black neighbors, you know, and things like that. So it may be off putting to them to then try to connect to us on a mm. human level. And it's unconscious. Yeah. Uh, that was a way better analogy than I did. Like mine, <laughs> I don't know I why it. I brought pizza into it. It made that, <laughs> it actually made no sense. It's okay, Glenn. That's why I'm here, right? <laughs> this is why you're here. This is, you you this helped is reel it back in. You helped yes. bring us back to center. <laughs> Just in case I'm making uh, crazy statements. So listen, Another thing that mm-hmm. you are really into, right, um, is like co- uh, cosplay, as yeah. I understand it. Uh, what, what you have, uh, Uncle Goggles Emporium, mm-hmm. which is a 3D print workshop, which is amazing. I've been uh, very close to 3D printing um, in, in my cosplay career. I had, a, I had a run there. There was a run from like maybe 2012. No, wait, 2000. And, 15 or so 2016 mm-hmm. um where i was doing a lot of cons i have a great falcon or i had a great falcon mm-hmm. um i did a, a a black panther as well mm-hmm. um basically i ran the gamut of, of the of the black superheroes uh but that's something that you're really into tell us about your uh uncle goggles emporium how'd you get into cosplay okay so uncle goggles emporium is just you know you know starts off as you know, we could buy a 3D printer and print a lot of stuff. And then our friends were like, hey, can you print me that too? So we're like, hmm. we can make money off this. So yeah. Uncle Goggles Emporium was, um, the name is off of a D&D character. My partner, Jason, um, had always played. It was always some type of like gnome, you know, or dwarven artificer. So it's always Uncle Goggles is doing Uncle this. Goggles sounds like a dwarf. Sounds like a dwarf. Exactly. So... <laughs> So then he, oh wait, what's, know, the, what's the shorter one? Is the, are the gnomes the shorter ones or are the dwarfs the shorter ones? Uh, gnomes are shorter. Oh, so okay, you're right. I'm sorry. I apologize. It's okay. <laughs> it's it's okay. I'm gonna blame that on the sleep deprivation. <laughs> so, <laughs> so yeah. So then you know the name just kind of stuck, and then you know we first it starts off as just printing you know other silly little things that we were printing for ourselves until people um really liked a lot of our dice towers that we would bring to like conventions and stuff and you know you quick like pick up games and then we're like how much would you pay for this right <laughs> and that's right. kind of where it went we we're like we can print a bunch of these be a vendor get the tickets to conventions and game you know after the vendor hall closes like this is a win win like so we started that transition from you know, being, you know, four day con attenders to being vendors and gaming at night. <laughs> that is so awesome. I mean, because yeah. it's, it's very, uh, well, I, from the very beginning, my con experience was mm-hmm. never as like a con goer because I was always doing like press for them. So I was mm-hmm. like interviewing and whatnot. Yeah. Um, and then I turned into a con goer, so to speak, when I started doing cosplay a little bit more. Um, yeah. But I, I also wrapped that into, um, uh, during the press thing. So, uh, I never had that like attendee thing. It was always like kind of, uh, work, like fun work, like work, but fun work. Um, mm-hmm. so, so yeah, I, I love cons. I, I love going to them. Yeah. I miss going to them. Um, did you go to blurred con? Yeah, we were actually vending there this year. So it was, pretty amazing, you know, that they were able to keep those type of COVID restrictions and they had an amazing turnout and we've already, you know, paid up our table fees and we will be back for 2022. Oh, really? Nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What are they doing it for 2022? Is it going to be the same time next year or are they? It's going to be the weekend of July 8th. Okay. Now, was that, that wasn't their, was that their original weekend? Like that they used to have it or? Um, I kind of remember more being in the June time frame. So okay. I think they may have had a choice and that's pretty close to 4th of July weekend. So a lot of people have that time off, you know, and be able to come into DC. 
Yeah. I mean, it was a BlurredCon was very fun. I could see it like growing. Like mm-hmm. it was a very fun experience when I went because I went the year before mm-hmm. all this craziness happened or two yeah. years before all this craziness happened uh, with the COVID restrictions and whatnot. Mm-hmm. Um, and BlurredCon is a it was a fun time. I was uh, I was there hanging out. Uh, one of my buddies is a stunt person. Mm-hmm. Um, he does like stunt work for like, you know, the Avengers and like Black Panther and like yeah. the, the actual Marvel movies and whatnot. Mm-hmm. And so he had a panel there and uh, he, he took me around and I was like, you know, watching all the stuff in the behind the scenes. And then uh, it, I don't know, just the the feeling was even though it was just in a hotel or whatever, the feeling was was very, very. Um, uh, what would I say? Like. Uh, familiar almost or it, it just felt really close like close knit the whole community there at blur con mm-hmm. and i can't wait to go back you know especially yeah. since now i'm the blur dad i need to be at blur con exactly that, that, that's why i was surprised when i was there i was like oh, i wonder where glenn's at oh wait he just had a baby one <laughs> literally just had, like it was that same weekend i believe that i just yeah. had had the baby so i was like mm, yeah that's it, that is next to impossible. Yeah. Oh, Morgan says he needs to visit the Emporium for Blurred Con 2022. I was going to say, if Morgan needs, you know, some Loki horns or something like that, you know, we'll totally, you know, put oh some baby God. ones for him. Listen, uh, is there a newborn discount? Is there a newborn, is there a newborn discount? discount? I hate asking for discounts, except for Morgan. Morgan. I'm sure we can. I'm sure we can think of something, you know, a little little model, you know, picture exchange. There we go. I mean, look, we can we can pimp him out at this age right now. You know what I'm saying? We yes. get to sign all his uh, his contracts and whatnot. So, mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. oh, he is so cute. He was he was hitting on the uh, pediatrician today. Like she was checking on him, and he has this little like smile thing that he does. He's just mm-hmm. like, and then she was just like, oh, I wish I could get off work and go home. And I was like, whoa, Morgan, like, come on, bro, like that. <laughs> That's a survival yeah. mechanism, right? Babies yeah. flirt, we feed them, we take care of them. Exactly. We don't, we don't leave them for the wolves. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, I've wondered this, and maybe you can help me out with this. All right. How did the first baby survive, right? This is what <laughs> this is what I'm so the baby like the baby is, mm-hmm. is born. I guess there would have to be a mother, but that mother was at one time a, a baby. Mm-hmm. How? How how did because babies can't do anything? So how did the first one? survive like what did they come from uh, this is an evolution question is this really. like a chicken and the egg kind it's of thing? a chicken and the egg question <laughs> i think we had this discussion about you know babies as soon as they're born if you were to place them on you know the abdomen of their like mothers that they will army crawl they will follow that line that sent straight to the breast milk hmm. so i don't know Trial and error, because I'm sure there are many, many uh, infants that didn't make it that far. Oh, yeah. That's, I mean, I guess, well, the first, I feel like the first few had to make it for us to repopulate. (laughs) (laughs) And then the ones that didn't get with the program, their genetics didn't get passed on. And yeah. (laughs) Womp womp. Yeah. I'm sorry. Just took it right off that cliff. (laughs) No, it's it's fine. (laughs) Uh, so uh, here we usually ask a blurting question. Our blurting question has started to morph into what do you nerd out about? Like, what is the thing that you are the biggest nerd about? Um, my goodness. What is my nerding thing? So I'm definitely like a really big fan of Raven from Teen Titans. And I don't mean the CW show. I'm talking about Wolfman, 1970s, 1980s. Like I own every Teen Titans comic. It's wow. like in my will, like for my children. And they are like, that's crazy. Like we don't want this crap. <laughs> like, what? So you yeah. have like the original, original Teen Titans material. Exactly. I like on my Instagram, I do have some of the costume um, that I had like done and put together. And people were like, Who are you? And it was like much, you know, older nerds that were like, Oh my gosh, you're the original, you know, from the comic. So wait, <laughs> this was something that you were into when you were a youngin. A young well, what do you consider youngin? <laughs> so <laughs> I'm trying to think. So my youngest was born in 2014. So I think I put on this costume maybe 2016. Okay. So but when yeah. were you into the comics? Like from in your oh the comics? Oh my gosh. Um, definitely always started with X Men. Like I remember my ninth birthday party. Like my mom is showing me pictures because I was like telling her about it. 
X-Men birthday cake. Like my cake had X-Men cards in it. Like ninth birthday bowling alley X-Men birthday party. Uh, you know what's so the thing is, <laughs> my, my nerdum, I think my nerdum is uh is very much tied to television and mm -hmm. movies. So everything television and movies I'm in. And yep. you know, that's the one regret that I have that I didn't I wasn't into the comics when I was young. But mm -hmm. like like my my nerdum of all things television started when I was like very, very young. Like my very first movie was uh The Untouchables. Um mm -hmm. and then Scarface or Scarface and then The Untouchables. I can't I can't remember it was one or actually I think the first movie I ever saw was Scarface in the theaters, and then The Untouchables, and then you know, a bunch of other Nightmare on Elm Street, like mm -hmm. you know, I used to like watch all all those, and then from that, just basically all of television i used to be uh really into um yeah. and then and from that that's how i got into like you know x-men and mm -hmm. you know all these you know spider-man superman all like all of that stuff was my entry so i know a lot of it from the the tv and film lore uh, yeah. and not so much the comic book lore what am i missing out on <sighs> So much. It's like, you know, when someone goes to the movie and sees like Harry Potter and you got that nerd in the background, like that never happened. Or, <laughs> or, you know, the debate, you know, with Ravenclaw's colors in the book versus the movies and things like that. So what are the colors? Movie? Cause they're purple. They're purple and black in the, in the, um, in the show. Right. Uh, in the movies there. Uh, sorry, please don't kill me. Other nerds, blue and silver, <laughs> but in the books, I guess it's like a, gold and blue you know it's it's been years and i'm not the biggest fan of jk rowling anymore you know we don't oh we don't vibe I, with turf i thought so. you were talking about raven from the from teen titans oh not man Ra you meant yeah. raven cloth maybe oh, call the school right from yeah Earth. but yeah okay <laughs> so when it comes yeah when it comes to the comics and stuff it's really a lot more of like those um like the relationship developments and stuff and then obviously being the teen sidekicks you know to like wonder woman and batman you know you, you get right. all those you get to see you know pretty much when the superheroes you know are out there you know at the uh the justice hall and all that and the teens are like man fuck him like can you believe <laughs> like <laughs> he told me i had to be home at 10 you know <laughs> right it is kind of an interesting take on the superhero though it's like oh how the sidekicks are annoyed at them because they treat them you know like like little kids. Now I did backtrack. I did backtrack and read a lot of uh mm. some of the comic material, but there's a lot now. Like, you know what I mean? Like if I was coming up as a mm -hmm. as a youth list watching this or uh reading it, then I feel like uh the like what would you call it? Like the um the snowball effect of how much uh content it has been created versus exactly. like how much is continuing to create. So now it's like at a point where to go back and read everything, it would it's like it's like a lot of work. But I'm doing the work. I'm doing the work to get my backlog. Mm -hmm. uh, but the thing is, is now you can you know download these things on PDF. You know they're public domain at this point, so you can speed through them. Versus like, okay, I have comic number this and that. So I gotta save up my allowance, get down yeah. to the comic book shop, dig through those dollar bins to fill in the gaps, you know, to continue reading. I things feel like in order. that's part of it too, and I feel like mm -hmm. that's why nerds a lot of time are like they they don't necessarily want to give you love for not knowing because they mm -hmm. had to go through so much. One being like you know like ostracized because it wasn't a cool thing to have yeah. back you know back in the day it was it was it was less cool you know what i mean uh and mm -hmm. uh and then you had to actually like save up and get it then you have to go find it so there's all these little facets of that uh society that they're like it's like a badge of honor to be like no 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 no. i have to yeah. like get this and then hide it from all the people and read it under the bleachers exactly <laughs> yeah yeah hi I definitely remember a lot of that. I would say it was definitely in that time period, you know, when Sailor Moon was finally getting its English, you know, dubs and things like that. And then it was really lame and people thought it was the stupidest thing. And then, you know, later on in life, I get, you know, Sailor Moon tattoos and things like that. And then all of a sudden now everyone's like, that's so cool. And I'm like, yeah, what are you talking about? This yeah. is not cool. Like had those, you know, anime wall scrolls, you know, Dragon Ball Z and stuff all over my room in high school. And it's like, I don't know. Now every, everyone's a nerd. I, yeah. Like everyone has it. Yeah, man. I just, it's, a, it's a cool thing, but. 
what are we going to do? Everyone's trying to infiltrate. I know. <laughs> I know. But I feel like nerds are very, yeah, they're they're accepting to, to some degree. It's just like, don't get the lore wrong. If you're... <laughs> I used to do this thing when I went to the cons. Mm -hmm. They were called cosplay callouts. Mm -hmm. And I would just like I would walk around if I saw someone, I would try to guess what they were. And then yeah. a lot of times I'll get it right. But then sometimes I get it wrong. And the funniest ones were I feel like when I got it wrong, people were like, No, it's Sailor Moon, you dummy. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It's uh it was a fun experience, you know, the cosplay mm -hmm. callouts. Those were those were great yeah. little um Great moments in time. So, yeah. what do you look? What are you looking forward to? Oh, have you been watching the new Titans, um, the new Titans TV series? I pushed myself through the two seasons. And oh, you didn't? You didn't enjoy it? No. And this is where I was like, this is this is. I think this is where my old person line is like coming in. Like, I let the CW kids do the CW thing, and I'm just gonna be grouchy and go rewatch, you know, Futurama for the 25th time. <laughs> <laughs> what did you not like about Titans? Cause I'm enjoying it. I like it. I'm on season three right now. Cause it just came out again. And I'm, I like, I, I like it. I'm enjoying it. Maybe it's just that, that style of brooding, you know, what we kind of got with like twilight and stuff. Everything mm. just feels so angsty and everyone's like, you stare, you're breathing really hard. And it's like, just get together, get it out yeah. of your system. So then we can all move on. You'd be like, you know what? It wasn't that great. And then we can go on and save the world. <laughs> like, yeah, it is. It is definitely like very heavy dramatically. Yeah. So, you know, Whereas, it's good entertainment, but I'd rather watch, you know, other programs. <laughs> it's there's something about when they make it live action. It's like, it can't be fun anymore. It has to be real. And it's like when you watch like the cartoons or or even read the comics, it's like a lot more levity, I would say, I guess, yeah. to the to the show. Definitely. So I'm enjoying it. Um mm -hmm. what else what else are you watching nowadays? Oh my goodness, what am I watching nowadays? Um man, you put me on the spot. Like I didn't have these <laughs> questions prepared. What am I watching? You know, besides like the normal, you know, like Call the Midwife and <laughs> uh wait, is there a show called Call the Midwife? Oh my gosh, Glenn. I don't do reality no. television. No, 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 it's not reality. So you know, like Downton Abbey, you know, uh -huh. BBC programming. So okay. they have a period piece called Call the Midwife. And it's Ooh. into like its ninth season right now. And it it's takes you back, you know, until after the, the Great War and all that, and 1950s, 60s, taking you down to Poplar, London, Borough. Ooh. You know, midwives on bikes, living with nuns, delivering the babies of the city, you know? Hey, Steph, write it down. Call the midwife. <laughs> Put it on our list. We're gonna we're gonna have to we're gonna have to listen to that. Or, exactly. or watch you that. know, if you enjoy period pieces and British accents and you know, they they kind it kind of hits all the things. So to me, it's a great thing to like sit down and watch and eat Oreos and <laughs> she's oh, been wait, watching. Steph, what? 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 So she's having these do? looks that I don't know about, and she's watching shows that I don't know about. There's, we're gonna have to have a discussion. <laughs> oh man, oh man. It's, but man, yeah. maybe I can like do other things. Like I'm really into like animation, so I really enjoy watching like the Owl House. Have you watched that one? Which what's it called? Owl House. It's on Disney Plus. Hmm. No, is it about it? owls? Oh my god. Who's in it? Who who's in it? is in it? Well, I guess you will have to find out. Maybe you can watch it with Morgan. It is on Disney Plus. Is it really? So yeah, there's a lot of great. What is it? What's it about? Um, let's just say teen preteen girl really wants to be a witch. Lives with her mom. It's not really fitting in. Finds her, stumbles her way, you know, through magical portal into enters magical world. Gets taken on a wild ride with a really cool uh the owl witch and she ends up making friends going through adventures getting into magical school you know really fun silly little kid drama very um inclusive the main character she's latina so you know lots of going back and forth between spanish and english and that's interesting that yeah. it, sound, it sounds like an interesting show again i'm 
I'm just as much of an old curmudgeon as you are in terms of what I watch on TV. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> Like definitely, if it's reality TV, I'm like, Ugh. and then Stephanie will be watching that, and then I'll just be like, mm. I'll start like grumbling. She can hear me grumble. When, when... <laughs> you got to start watching these cartoons for Morgan's sake. You know, you want to yeah. like get into these things, kind of oh, review listen, them. I have, I have it queued up. I have all the Justice League uh, animes queued up, mm -hmm. ready for them. Uh, yeah. Some teen, the Teen Titan ones too. Um, those I really enjoy. Those I really enjoy the Justice League uh, animes. I think they're mm -hmm. um, incredible. Uh, Flashpoint yeah. Paradox is my one of my favorite uh, Justice League animes. Um, it's really good. Um, I don't know. Do you watch? Do you, have you ever watched the Justice League animes? No, I think the closest thing anime like that was, you know, when they try to do the uh, Wolverine and the. Uh, Iron Man animes yeah. and stuff. Yeah. Those, Marvel is terrible. They're, Marvel I know is great. It, I love their, uh, their the MCU and whatnot, but their mm -hmm. animated stuff is not good. Um, and I did not enjoy their, their animated stuff. DC, on the other hand, their cinematic stuff was not great. But their yeah. animated stuff is like top notch. It's like, damn, how, how are you this good at the animated stuff? But then your cinematic stuff is not great at all. I give Marvel a pass because it's like a lot of that stuff was made kind of before the, the MCU, you know what I mean? So it's like um, it's like kind of catch up. It's like all this stuff was there before they were making, you know, these these movies and making the cinematic universe or whatever. So it's yeah. like it wasn't good because it just came from another era. And now it's like kind of caught like, you know, I feel like now it, it would catch up or they have to catch up. But the DC stuff is pretty incredible. And there's like a through line and it, I don't know. It's just, uh, that stuff is really fun. Well, I guess you just got to give me a list so I can, you know, when I'm not I watching can. Call the Midwife, I can. Yeah. Uh, they have Teen Titans it. there too. Yeah. I've definitely watched that a couple of times through. And again, is that you'll cue this stuff up. You'll try to watch it with your children and be like, this is a great show. You get them all set up with popcorn and then they're just like, this is boring. Can I watch oh my Paw goodness. Patrol or yeah. something else? So get ready to have your heart broken over and over again, trying to get your kids into your nerdom. Well, you know what? You know what? You know, I got a, I got a solution for that. Mm -hmm. I ignore. I ignore him. And so he craves my attention. <laughs> and, then oh it's, and then he'll do whatever I want because it's like, daddy never pays me. Now he'll pay me attention. It's tricks. You got to trick these kids into liking what you like. <laughs> I'm just joking. I don't, I don't, I don't, I mean, I don't ignore him a lot. You know what I'm saying? He's only, he's only like two months. How much can I ignore him in two months? You know what I mean? Yeah. So, um, so what else is, is going on in your life that the people should know, whether it be uh, midwifery things or um, in terms of your, uh, your 3D uh, composite, no, 3D printing business. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't say compositing. I don't know what. 3D printing business. Um, what, what what should the people know? What do you got going on next? Or So I was going to say, so in the whole midwifery world, you know, as you've probably seen from some of my Instagram posts, the, the school I was accepted to is now closing down for oh, some shady investigation. Oh, yeah. So, you know, I had to jump ship, go somewhere else. Uh-oh. So, you know. She and instacarting in between midwifery and all that so you know check out my check out my instagram people because i i need to pay for books Ooh, what is, <laughs> no, wait uh, do you have like a gofundme as well um that is something i was considering getting up and going you know soon you know every time you hear someone has a gofundme it's more like i have cancer like or my house burnt down and then to me it's like asking you know for money for you know educational stuff i I felt like I was diverting, you know, that energy toward, you know, people that really needed that platform. Hold but, on, pause, pause. I'm yeah. sorry. I'm sorry to interrupt you, but have you been on GoFundMe? Like some people are like, yo, I need a new Xbox or uh, I need to go on vacation. You should really go on there because there's some people who don't have heartbreaking stories that are on there. You're like, what? It's like, you Wait, so this. That's, that's how I get the PS5? Is that's how you get the PS5. People have that on there. You know what I'm saying? There, I, I've seen people, they're like, they shut the OnlyFans uh, uh, adult yeah. content down, so I need a GoFundMe to make up the revenue stream. It's like, yeah. this GoFundMe doesn't come with nude pictures. Why would it? It's like, I subscribe to the OnlyFans. I'm not subscribing to the GoFundMe. 
<laughs> I'm sorry. I'm waiting for Stephanie to like open that door behind you. <laughs> no, nah, like, Stephanie just sits there and she just she just laughs. She's probably back there watching Call the Midwife without me, <laughs> making fun of my faces. Damn it. <laughs> Oh, my goodness. But, yeah, so that's on the midwifery round. And then, you know, when it comes to 3D printing, we're just um, with COVID and stuff, there's not a lot of conventions. So just kind of, you know, hustling on the Internet streets and then, you know, hoping 2022 lets us go to PrezCon, which is in Charlottesville, and then back to BlurredCon in July. Mm. So we're just holding out that people do the right thing. and yeah yeah so, do you, we so do you ever have you ever gone to new york city comic-con or san diego are, are you planning on trying to vendor at one of those uh no those are for the big boys oh <laughs> so really those tables are very you know we're like hundred dollar two hundred dollar you know vending tables those are like thousand dollar tables and those waiting lists you have to wait for someone to die to go to san diego comic-con oh really yeah yeah I, I, I when i lived in california i was you know Way back in the day of San Diego Comic Con, when you could like get there early in the morning and wait in line to volunteer for the day, and then uh -huh. you could get a pass, like that. Those were my San Diego Comic Con days. Yeah. It really blew up, right? It really, it, it did. And then I, because I knew and people knew me for volunteering, so then I could like volunteer security at like the Hasbro booth and things like that. And then it just got, it got too big. So I just enjoyed all the outdoor perks after that yeah. that's the same thing that happened with awesome con awesome con was like a kind mm -hmm. of small deal and then um i think the guy who created it he sold it to like one of the you know one of these big con yeah. companies and now it's like all corporate and you know it doesn't have that that same touch but i mean it's at a certain point you do kind of need like the bigger entities to you know pour more money into it to exactly. to make it be a bigger thing to take off and you know it becomes like this whole event I, i'm really missing the cons i can't wait to go to the cons and if i get the hookup i will i will definitely have to look out for you because you know sometimes mm -hmm. we get the we get the hookup new release yeah. wednesday nrw nerds rule the world we get we you know they look out for us every now and then yeah no that would be that would be really good especially if it's a local con and they're you know their first year starting up and they need as much community support yeah. One day they'll be the next awesome con. Exactly. Exactly. I went to Tidewater Comic Con. That was pretty cool. Yeah, they're a uh, really good con. I, I yeah. really enjoy them. So that, that was a fun one. And then uh and then, you know, awesome con. And mm. I, the the one of the highlights, one of the one of the funnest times I had was at New York City Comic Con, mm -hmm. which was great. Which is a good one. Yeah, usually um I would say before the youngest one, and then the first two years um, when we were able to baby wear, and we, were, we used to go to Gen Con a lot in Indianapolis and just game all the time. You've never been to Gen Con. It's that face that you're no, making. I'm not. <sighs> it's a I, great convention to wear your uh, baby to, and ooh. you can game all day. I it didn't stop me as nice. my youngest was under a year old. The oh know, really? I took him. Yep. And then went the following year when he was almost two, and it was great see great. back in the day though there weren't like because now we have to worry about all this like disease and worry about covid and stuff so uh, like back then yeah. i miss that i miss not having like w we used to just walk around and not worry about like, any, blow just walk candles around. on birthday cakes and then serve <laughs> everyone cake <laughs> you shook everyone's hand you would hug everyone i know <laughs> Yeah, I remember at, like Dragon Con, they were always doing like um, they had an immunization like track that you can go there and you know, you need chicken pops, you need the flu shot or whatever. And now we've seen cons popping up and doing like at the Ren Fairs, they're doing COVID shots now. So you can get your medieval time on, get your uh, get your turkey leg and get a COVID shot. Wait, what? At the, yeah, at the, at the Maryland Renaissance Festival, they had like a whole like little EMT booth set up and go get your shot yeah that's hmm. i've never been to ren fest either or ren fair either this is a great thing to take a baby to man yeah we might have to figure it out i met i i'm very sad uh that i'm gonna be growing up in this age where now i'm gonna have like my uh, you know like your grandparents had, used to have weird things that they would do like mm -hmm. you know they always put lysol in the chili or something you know what i mean it's just like that's just how they keep you safe you know what i mean and you wonder why did grandpa always do it that way but it's like you know they had like wars and stuff going on where they had to you know do you know xyz to to basically stay alive like why why did grandpa have like 
three hundred thousand dollars in his mattress. Like, oh, because back in the day, you know, it wasn't safe to like have your money out, and that's just how they uh, yeah. they had to do it or whatever. Um, and I'm gonna be like that. I'm gonna be like, why does Dad always, you know, like wash his hands three times and and spray, uh, you know, hand sanitizer in his mouth when he gets back in from outside? It's like you got to understand. In his day, COVID was a big thing. <laughs> Gosh, please, 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 anyone listening, do not put Lysol in your mouth. <laughs> or your chili. Don't put it in your mouth or your chili. <laughs> if grandpa starts doing that, it's time to have a, a, a discussion. <laughs> it's like, oh, I always thought it was for the pine flavor, but uh, apparently it's because there was a pandemic. <laughs> it's all Trump's recipe. Trump's recipe. Pine, yes. <laughs> Ooh, do I detect a little fabuloso in there? Oh, yes. <laughs> All right. Well, um, this has been pretty fun. This has been pretty enjoyable. Please uh, tell people where they can find you, where they can follow you, or whatever websites or links that you have for, for the people to follow you. Yeah. So if you guys want to follow me on Instagram, I'm Mel underscore Kennedy underscore Garden. Um find me on Facebook at the Garden Reproductive Health LLC. Um, I'm around. I'm. Uh, oh, look at that! Thanks. Yeah, we're professionals here. Man, <laughs> you guys got it all together. We, yes, make, we make it pop up and and happen. Look, I didn't even do it. No hands here. No hands, and, and it just popped up. Are you a wizard? <laughs> I'm a wizard. <laughs> By the way, I used to play D and D, and I was always a mage. I used to play Warcraft, and I was always a I was always a mage or a wizard in D and D, and um, well, now and you got to do it now with the little one. Little kids are great at rolling yeah. dice. And yeah, you, you, I, you I don't want one of our dice towers. You Ooh, can't mess up. What do they look like? Do you have one next to you right now that you could show? Oh man, I gotta like run over to the next room. Oh I'm, okay. I was like, how much time you got? <laughs> I, you know what? We can wait. I could just do the Jeopardy theme song. How long can we do it? Can we? Can we? Yeah. Give right. me ten seconds. See, they always do the remix on the second one. They listen, listen, forget about LeVar Burton. I need to be the next host of Jeopardy. They need to put me on Jeopardy because I will have it. I don't know any of the answers to those questions, but I can make it sound like I do. Oh, okay. Now Mel is back with this amazing that looks like something out of Thor Ragnarok or uh, uh, Loki. Yeah. That dice tower is amazing. So what do you, so you put the dice on the top and you roll it. Yep. And, it and so that gives you a okay. fair roll every time. Exactly. The large ones keep keep this table honest. You can play for any kind of dice game. And then we have your, you know, personal mini towers, you know, just for yourself. Ooh. And that's uh Black Panther purple. Exactly. <laughs> that's T'Challa purple right there. Yes, RIP exactly. Mr. Chadwick Boseman. <laughs> So yeah, so yeah, we that's something you know we really enjoy printing people. We've had some everything custom count. ones. Like if I had like a custom thing that I wanted to be printed with, like for the dice tower, like if I wanted my dice tower to look like the Avengers Tower, could you do that? Um, it would take a little bit of modeling time, and you know, we couldn't call it <clears throat> Avengers Tower. No, it would be the A Tower. It would be the superhero a tower. tower. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, but no. Uh, we're pretty good at what we do, you know. Just not something we could ever post pictures of or advertise because you know, mm. cease and desist and stuff. We don't want. No, to that's cool. I, you know what? I'm I'm the type <laughs> of person who likes to have dope stuff in my house. That's like, oh, you can't find this anywhere. <laughs> exactly, and that's usually what our what our people do. They they contact us, we do the thing, and then they get to uh, be better than all their friends until they figure out where they got it from. Dude, if you need custom. Uh, 3D printing. You need to holler at Uncle Goggles uh, Emporium. <laughs> anyway, uh, Mel, this has been so fun. I hope it's been fun for you. Was this what you expected when you came on? Was was this what you hoped for? Or, or was there a question I should have asked you that I didn't ask? 
no, this is pretty much how I expected it to go. It was just more of not wanting to be a jerk and cancel on you or to be like, hey, I'm here, you know, elbow deep in placenta. But hey, yeah, what's hey, up? Hey, I know. Like, right? <laughs> hold on, hold on. The baby's coming out before you ask your next question. question exactly. <laughs> so, No, I mean, that was a big worry. Were you going to be able to have the free time? Because you are on call and you're making amazing things happen mm -hmm. for mother mothers across the DMV. Yeah, I work with all pregnant people. So, you know, wherever you're at in your life, just contact me and I'll help you along. Oh, well, we can't wait to see you again. Thank you so much for uh, coming on, mm -hmm. chatting, chopping it up with us. Um, I definitely think we'll be in contact about a dice tower. Um, and, uh, and we'll have to talk. I don't, I, did you say you play Warcraft? Um, no, more um, D and D S you know, okay. games <laughs> like, like actual, like actual, uh, D and D with like a dungeon master and paper and pe ah, I used to love that too. I was such, dude, I was into it. I was, well, it's time. It's time to get back into it. Oh, yeah. we got, we, we got our kids into it. Really oh, can I math. tell you, oh, before <laughs> I go, I just have to complain. The people at work were like, oh, we're going to, like, I started the conversation talking mm -hmm. about D&D. &D. Let's get another D&D &D thing together. And then they started up a game and then they hit me up and be like, oh, actually, uh, we don't want you to play. I was like, what? But I was doing comedy, so I was like too busy anyway. Oh, but I was just like, yeah. you know what? Screw y'all, stupid table. I would have flipped your table over anyway, idiots. <laughs> make your own D&D &D game. Make my own damn D&D &D game. And you know what? I'm going to make all of you goblins. <laughs> or orcs. <laughs> Whatever we kill off the boast of, it's going to be. I was going to say, wait a minute. I play half-orc characters. So oh, well, they're half-orc. discrimination? Oh, not half. <laughs> it's going to turn to a whole other conversation. <laughs> I know, <right? laughs> Let's get the short end of the stick, man. There's like there's a lot of orc racism in uh although I did used to play orc when I played um what's it called? Um uh no, I played ogre, mm -hmm. which is a form of orc. Yes. See? Oh man, that's See? a that's a whole other podcast, right? The uh, yeah, dude, the crossovers with orcs and racism. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, uh, <laughs> this has been incredible. You've been incredible. I can't wait to see you again. We we're going to talk. We're going to see each other later this week. I'm going to close this uh, show out. Um, stick around and say bye to you, okay? For okay. one second. All right, y'all. That was Mel Kennedy. Uh, amazing person, first and foremost, and then an amazing midwife or soon to be midwife and, and doula, um, and also a great 3D printer. Uh, we learned a lot this episode. We learned that 70s been keeping things from me. How dare she? Uh, we're going to have to get that sorted out. We learned that she's been watching. Oh, she's just going to. She's like, shut up and hear, hear, your, hear your social. Stop talking. Anyway, um, yeah, we learned a lot. This episode was great. Um, advocacy, uh, praying for all the people in Louisiana, uh, as well as Afghanistan. And I know people don't want to hear it, but I even pray for Kanye. And with that said... Blurred that out.